What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumours you need to know, including why David Benoit was banned backstage at WWE events, Sergeant Slaughter's official record as a Marine, the Usos discuss their hiatus from the WWE, Paige's reactions to Triple H's joke, Tyson Fury's WWE future and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. But let's waste no further time and get straight into the first story, as Raw's ratings drop. Raw faced some stiff competition on 13th January as it had to face the NCAA National Championship game. The college football game brought in an impressive 25 million viewers, and judging by the ratings, it drew away some of Raw's audience. PW Insider's Dave Shearer reported that the 13th January edition of Raw brought in 2.03 million overnight viewers. This is down from last week's 2.385 million overnight viewers. You can see from the table there is a significant drop between Hour 1 and Hour 3, losing almost 400,000 viewers. Raw dropped 15% from the previous week and as usual, Raw failed to keep its audience after the first hour. The WWE has started announcing matches for the third hour ahead of time, but Raw could not keep its viewers tuned in. Raw has a great talent roster, but are they good enough or not just being used properly? Next up, Paige responds to Triple H's joke. As we noted in a previous video, Triple H recently made a joke about Paige not knowing if she had children or not. Paige recently spoke with reporter Gary Cassidy about the remarks, which were not well received. She mentioned, Obviously, I was a little bit vexed, a little bit taken back. He's someone that I truly look up to and he's always been very respectful. So I feel he got caught up maybe in a joke, but I just don't think it was appropriate to joke about. Again, it's not something I'm going to continually keep talking about. She pointed out that they definitely reached out and we've talked about it. So it seems that the situation may have been resolved. Next up, a WWE Saudi Arabia date has apparently been moved. A PW Insider is reporting that there's been a scheduling change for the WWE's upcoming show in Saudi Arabia. Mike Johnson is reporting, WWE sources have indicated to PWInsider.com that preliminary date has been moved to the following week, Thursday 27th February. We are told that creative for the event has not been locked in. Now, if you caught our recent news video, you know that several WWE superstars are rumored to be concerned about going to the Middle East following the turmoil in Iran. There is likely concern over the difficulties WWE superstars had following Crown Jewel when they were unable to leave the country. Next up, a big return on SmackDown. The WWE has announced more of the lineup for Friday Night SmackDown with Lacey Evans facing Sasha Banks and the mayor of Knoxville County, Tennessee, aka the Big Red Machine, is making an appearance. While the WWE teased an Evans vs. Bank match last week, Banks was supposedly elsewhere recording her new album. While it's okay for the WWE to pull an occasional bait and switch, here the idea being Banks couldn't be bothered to fight Evans, thereby creating more of a reason for wrestling sassy Southern Belle to fight her, you can't do this on a regular basis, so the WWE had best deliver the match. As for Kane, no word on whether he'll be competing, but with the Royal Rumble coming soon, it would be good to see Kane enter so we can chalk up some more eliminations to his record for the most cumulative eliminations. As for SmackDown, the WWE is loading up the show with Big E vs John Morrison already announced, as well as Roman Reigns vs Robert Roode in a tables match. Next up, the Usos discuss their hiatus. Jimmy and Jey Uso had been gone from the WWE for a while. The dynamic duo appeared on WWE backstage and talk about what led them to taking time off from the WWE. I think we both think you know how it is being on the road, it's hectic. You almost get tunnel vision on the road. It becomes your baby. It becomes what I need to do. How can I fix that crack? How can I get over like this? How can I talk this way? How can I look this way? You put so much energy into this, right? I think that's what we're doing. We didn't slow down, you almost have to get away from it. The WWE's touring schedule is known for being demanding, which is why AEW's much lighter schedule appeals to some wrestlers. So it's no surprise the Usos were happy to take time off. Of course, Jimmy's recent arrest last July seemed to have given both the Usos an unexpected vacation. Thankfully for Jimmy, he was not found guilty and the Usos are back on SmackDown. Next up, another superstar re-ups with WWE. The WWE continues to lock down every superstar it can to long-term deals, with the WWE's resident singer, songwriter and occasional wrestler Elias reportedly putting pen to paper to stick around for a few more years. The announcement was made on WWE Backstage, and then it was posted to WWE.com. 
Elias has agreed to a multi-year contract extension with WWE, as first reported on WWE Backstage. WWE's resident Songbird Elias has multiple 24-7 title reigns to his credit, as well as victories over the likes of John Cena and Finn Balor. He recently declared his entry into the 2020 Men's Royal Rumble match, pointedly calling out WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. This blurb is hilarious given the incredible number of wrestlers Elias has jobbed to. Apparently, WWE.com felt the list of wins by Elias would have taken up far less space than the list of losses. Next up, Chris Benoit's son asked him to retire. Chris Benoit's son David covered considerable territory during his recent interview with Chris Van Vliet, discussing the impact his father's death had on him, as well as a variety of other topics. Now, we already mentioned a number of them in the previous video, but another thing David brought up was that he had asked his dad to retire from wrestling, revealing the WWE even offered him a job as a producer in 2006 when Benoit was recovering from an injury. According to David, he was thinking about it. I'm pretty sure he was. I wanted him to. He did everything, man. He had nothing left to prove. All the boys respected him, office respected him. He loved WWE. He wouldn't have taken it from nobody. Sadly, we'll never know whether retirement could have altered history and the speculation at this point is meaningless. Whilst we're on the topic of David Benoit, he explained why he's banned from the WWE backstage area. David explained that WWE was none too pleased with him when he wore an AEW sweatshirt to a live event in Edmonton. Benoit, who is friends with Chris Jericho, had previously attended AEW's Double or Nothing and All Out events as he wanted to see Jericho perform. When Benoit tried to go backstage at the WWE event, he was reportedly told he was not welcome. According to various news sites, Benoit wearing an AEW jacket backstage may have had something to do with it. David was wearing an AEW sweatshirt at the Edmonton show, and according to Benoit, they thought Jericho brought it for me. They thought it was a rib. It was because I went to an AEW show. It blows my mind, bro. I had to make a few phone calls. I was trying to talk to someone, but they never got back to me for a good four to five months. Everything's fine now, I talk to their lawyers. I'm welcomed everywhere now. We're good. In hindsight, Benoit wearing an AEW jacket backstage at one of WWE's shows, then wearing an AEW sweatshirt to another live event was either incredibly short-sighted or incredibly stupid. Next up, the US Marine Corps finds no record of Sergeant Slaughter. As discussed last week, Twitter user SoCal Uncensored brought up a story from 1985 where it was alleged Sergeant Slaughter, aka Robert Remus, was never a member of the United States Marines. Now the Twitter user appears to have obtained records from the Marines via the Freedom of Information Act. SoCal Uncensored posted the document with the following message. Official response from the Department of the Navy to if Sergeant Slaughter ever served in the Marines. For those who do not have time to read, he did not. So Cal Uncensored posted a document reportedly from the US Marine Corps which states, We initiated a search for the files maintained by the Manpower Management Records and Performance Branch. MMRP was not able to identify Mr. Remus as a member or a former member of the US Marine Corps or Marine Corps Reserve based upon the information provided in your request. As mentioned before, Slaughter had not only claimed to be a Marine as part of his wrestling character, but also during public appearances where he discussed serving in the Vietnam conflict. Next up, AEW expands its television deal with TNT and announces a second weekly show. Things seem to be going great with AEW as it's obviously making TNT very happy. AEW just announced they've extended their partnership with TNT till 2023 and also announced a second show. They tweeted, Warner Media announced today an expanded relationship with All Elite Wrestling, the groundbreaking new wrestling league that has already redefined wrestling with resounding success after only a few months. Warner Media has extended their deal for AW Dynamite, a top 20 new cable unscripted series, through 2023. In addition, the parties have agreed to launch another night of AEW action, offering more of the fans' favorite wrestlers with a second show straight to series. This is incredible news for AEW, and it shows that they're here to stay. In our last story, Triple H discusses Tyson Fury's WWE future. And Tyson Fury pulled in a nice paycheck for his appearance at the WWE's Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia, but what does the future hold for the boxing superstar? Right now, Fury is scheduled for a major boxing match against Deontay Wilder on 22nd February. As we've noted, the WWE seems to be waiting to see whether Fury wins or loses, obviously not wanting to back up the Brinks trucks should he lose. Here's what Triple H had to say on the subject of Fury's return. I think the doors open on our side and the doors open on his side, but there's a lot of things in between now and then. 
that fight on February 22nd will be huge to him as to what his next steps are in all of this. So we're open to that stuff, but it needs to be right for everybody. Do you guys want to see Fury come back to the WWE? And if yes, who should he face? Be sure to leave your comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.